The Monacan people once dominated the entire Piedmont region of what is now Virginia for centuries before the Europeans came. By the mid-1700s, the Monacan population had already been decimated by smallpox and other diseases. When the European colonists began moving into their territory, many surviving Monacans left the region to join other eastern tribes. But some Monacan groups chose to stay, keeping to themselves in the remote recesses of the Blue Ridge Mountains, struggling to survive in a world that had once been theirs alone and gradually losing many indigenous traditions. The families in one such community at Bear Mountain in Amherst County, Virginia, retained a strong sense of their identity as Native Americans. In 1989, after enduring more than a century of institutionalized prejudice, the people of Bear Mountain gained official recognition from the Commonwealth of Virginia as the Monacan tribe. This is the story of our struggle and our ongoing effort to reclaim our heritage. land that you see through here, we said you're looking at, that belonged to the Indians. How many times will you take our land away? How many times till it's your own? How many times? From the place we call our home If you could leave a message for a Monacan Indian a hundred years down the road, what would it be? Love your family. Family comes first. Hold your family within your heart because your family is going to carry you further in life than anybody. Always remember your Indian. And do the best you can. Just keep on fighting. And fight for the right. Remember who your grandmothers and grandfathers were from the beginning of time and how they lived. Study all the old things that would be behind and then make the future better for, for Indian people. Be Indian and be proud. In our effort to recover Monacan history, the Tribal Council has worked closely with certain scholars who are doing related research and are willing to share their information with our people. Jeffrey Hantman, professor of archaeology at the University of Virginia, first became interested in Monacan prehistory and culture when studying the Jamestown documents. What was written down in the Jamestown records really wasn't a full picture or even an accurate, completely accurate picture of who the Monacans were. Since then, he has identified several Monacan village sites and sacred burial mounds throughout the Virginia Piedmont and Blue Ridge and has done archaeological digs at some village sites along the James River. This is the Monacan Indian village site that was lived in on and off for several thousand years. If you look at John Smith's 1607 map of, of Virginia, he indicates that one of the five known Monacan towns was up on the James River, probably uh, about this spot. So given the kinds of artifacts we found, we also had some reason to believe that this particular place may be the location or the approximate location of the known Monacan village of Monahassanaw. What we're hoping to find as we open up an area like this are patterns of disturbances in the soil. Once we find them, we excavate them and see if we can interpret what they are. Now, what we have here is a feature that's been fully excavated. Within this area, there was a circle of dark stained dirt and it was full of charcoal, pottery, firecrack rocks, stone tools, a very exciting uh, feature. And this is a basin-shaped pit. This probably was a cooking pit of some sort. It's actually a, a small and shallow feature that would have been opened up for a very short period of time, cooked a few meals in it, maybe a season or a year or two, and then it filled in with trash and was sealed. And it remained sealed for several hundred years until we uh, excavated it this summer. Again, with charcoal and food remains, it's an opportunity to date the site, to, to really document the history of the Monacan people through time and when this village was lived in and the, the centuries it was lived in and also the kinds of foods people were eating um, 
as well as the kinds of tools they were using uh, and making at the site. So this doesn't look like much, but is an exciting find that the kinds of things that help us reconstruct the Monacan history. What this is is the evidence of the architecture of the Monacan Indians in, in the late prehistoric period. When we get down to this lighter colored soil, occasionally we see these darker stains. These are post holes. And what they are are the, are the remains of wooden posts that have been set in the ground, the posts that would have been part of a, wood, of a wooden post and thatch structure. You see these posts here form a, an oval type pattern. They follow in an arc, which indicates that the, if we've mapped this house correctly, the Monacan houses uh, of prehistory were uh, an oval or a circular shape. And that's an interesting uh, discovery for us, given that the drawings that we have of the Algonquin Indians, the Powhatan Indians of the uh, coastal plain, tend to show that those houses were either square or rectangular. And this is one more, one more piece of evidence for the uniqueness of the Siouan cultures of the, of the Monacan uh, people, uh, at least as we've seen here and, and several other houses that have been identified in the Piedmont, the evidence seems to, to show that these were, were round houses. In addition, we found quite a bit of pottery, and the pottery has very distinctive decorations on it. Some of it, uh, while the clay was still wet, the Monacan Indians would take fabrics that were woven from local grasses and reeds and press the, the fabrics themselves haven't preserved, but they would take these fabrics and press them into the wet clay. And the clay would, was then fired, and what you have in the pot is actually an impression of the uh, decorative fabrics that, that were woven by uh, the people of that time. So we find pottery that has these fabric impressions on them. And in addition, we see some that have, are impressed with nets, net impressed pottery, and some that are wrapped in cords. Very distinctive uh, styles of the region, um, and, and quite a diverse array of, of decorative designs. Dr. Hantman also discovered in the diaries of Captain John Smith the earliest written account of Monacan culture, including Smith's report of a remarkable and prophetic story told by a man named Amarolek, the first Monacan to confront an Englishman. First, Smith says, tell me about your world, and Amarolek says, I only know three worlds that are under the sky. And those three worlds are the Powhatans, the Massawomeks, and the Monacans. And in, when he says that, he includes himself as a Monacan. After that, Smith says, well, tell me about the world of the Monacans. And Amarolic describes the villages along the Rappahannock River, people who call themselves Manahoek. And then he describes the the villages, the Monacan villages along the James. In other instances, he indicates that all of these villages were, were linked together, confederated in some way, uh, which I think, especially if you look at the archaeological evidence of the mounds and pottery, that whole world of the Piedmont and the Blue Ridge defines was the Monacan world. Smith then says, says to Amarolic, why, why have you come to us in anger? Why did you shoot these arrows at us? us who have come to you in love. And Amarolic, who had been taken captive and who's not treated well to that point, uh, answers Smith directly by saying, well, we heard that you were a people who came from under the world to take our world from us. And I think, of course, he was right uh, and shows tremendous insight in that one sentence. And that also describes what I think what I would uh, interpret as a Monacan uh, worldview in 1607, which sees the English as representing a, a force that's at odds with, uh, with the Native American worldviews and that was not going to be good for Indian culture in this region. And it also perhaps explains why the Monacans had very little to do with the English, whereas many tribes on the coast, including the Powhatans, traded with and uh, in some instances intermarried with the English and other European colonizers. The Monacan response, I think, was to pull back. Oh yeah, there was giants living in the land. They were big men, you had to look up to them, but they drove them all out. <laughs>